There we go. Are we live now? <laughs> I've been chit-chatting, and I'm here to introduce the uh, the spiral candy uh, candy cane quilt block. And of course, there's technical issues. There's another yet another update, and I suffer the tragedy of the holiday seasons trying to broadcast live. But as I was saying, there's all of these uh, peppermint teas and candies and i've got a thing or two to say about it <laughs> it's not my favorite um yeah so we're gonna I, I was looking around over on the internet um this past uh weekend and i was like i've been eyeing this pattern for a couple of years now and i'm gonna show you uh, hopefully we're gonna show you um i'm gonna show you over on Geta's, what is her name? Geta's Quilt Studio. She has lots and lots of patterns that I really would love for you guys to check out. Um, I think she is in Romania, and so she takes PayPal, but she has so many, so many patterns that are really great, especially now that the holidays have arrived. And so I actually purchased this one, and I'm not actually going to give away any trade secrets. The, it's um, pretty straightforward. Once you get into the um, the cutting, then it's it's just a matter of patience and persistence. But I'm going to show you um, how I approach the the project. Um, she's recommending. I'm going to say it right out front that you use one of those exacto knives. And if you're like me, I don't trust myself with those. I, I'm usually with a rotary cutter or I have my scissors, but like those exacto knives, you know, like you really have to be precise. And what's interesting when we get into the um, how I approached it, um, one key thing is anytime that you're cutting out these applique shapes is that you don't want to create hash marks. So when you're when you're um, creating your spiral block, you're create you're cutting out each individual um, leg or or pinwheel, and you don't want to overcut because then you're going to wind up with a lot of frayed, even more frayed edges, and it's just going to go out of shape. But what I did, instead of printing out her pattern, and then um, if you watched a couple of episodes ago, I was using um, a PDF version where you put it in poster mode, and then you start taping all of these pages together. Her system is exactly the same. So you get her template, and then you're going to... Um, print them all out on pages then you tape them together and then you put them onto your and scotch tape them onto your fabric and then you get that exacto knife and then you're going to be with your cut mat and your netflix or your youtube or your podcast for several hours and what i did i decided to change it up a little bit i uh, decided to go with my cricket uh, if you saw earlier <clears throat> that it, I had all of these cutouts, well, yeah, this is what I did. I just took it to the Cricut, Cricut Maker and I actually made a, um, a screen print of the actual template itself. So well, let me show you, um, I'm going to take you over to Cricut if I can. Um, let me go back. Hopefully this will work. Oh, I've got to unload. Okay, so let me get that for you. Hit finish. All right, I should be able to take you to the screen now. All right, so I'm in Cricut, and what I did is I'm actually even going to take one step backward, and I just went to all my uploads. What I did is I created a screen print of the spiral itself, and then you can add that into your canvas and then you notice that it is when you do this and actually i'm going to do it fresh because i already had the file working this morning but i'm going to uh, go back to the beginning where i uploaded the the image file that i was working with and then i added it to my canvas and then in the upper right hand corner i'm getting this notification that says hey uh, there's a problem with the sizing on your file. So it's telling me that I need to reduce it because um, 
The cutting mat itself is only 12 inches, um, 12 inches wide. So this one happens to be a longer one, but they make some of them that are 12 by 12. This one's a 12 by 24. So get whatever size works for you. And then the beauty is, is that you can, you can actually make you whatever that you want to cut out any size that you want. And with the uh, height, which is on the right and the width that's on the left, these are actually locked. So if I change one, I'm changing both. And I'm just going to make this at 10 inches. And for whatever reason, it bumps it up on the width to 10.01. I'm okay with that. And then all I have to do is say, go ahead and make it. And then I'm going to tell it, hey, yep, um, is this, are you using smart materials and I'm not going to use a mat or are you going to be on a mat? And for me, this project, I'm going to be on a mat. And from there, then I can say, hey, all right, where do I want to position this on my mat? Now, what I did, let me take one step. Um, what I did is I, I made my, um, my finished template that I'm putting into Cricut, I made it 10 inches. So that diameter is 10 inches, but I made my fabric 13. And I know I just said that these boards are 12 inches, but I'm actually cheating just a little bit because there's some, um, there's some space on either side. So officially this is 13 inches wide. And then that I knew if I wasn't perfect when I was placing my, um, my template onto that cutting, onto that, uh, virtual cutting mat, I knew that I would have a little bit more room to play with. So what I did is I know that the total, total width is 13 inches. And so what I did is I came down from, and I'm going to make this a little smaller. So I did from one to 11 inches. So that gives me 10. Um, and that's on my Y axis. And then on my X axis, I did the same. I did from one to 11. So I'm on the mat. I've told it, Hey, I have a 12 inch by 12 inch. I could have said, Hey, I'm on a 12 inch by 19 inch board. It doesn't really matter. Um, as long as, um, I have enough fabric and I have enough, um, uh, room on the board to do that. So I'm going to bump this up just so I can see that I'm on the mark and I'm trying to center this as much as possible because I actually do the same on when I'm applying the fabric onto the mat. I'm going to, there's a line at the top. And so I have a straight cut and a straight cut and I'm just lining it up to make sure that I'm exactly on those, um, those markers and then we can continue. All right. So once I've done that, then I am sending it to the software and saying, Hey, now I can browse all materials. So I could tell this, Hey, this is going to be cardboard. This is going to be on poster board. It could be, um, fabric. And that's where I landed. Um, what else? There's all kinds and you can really specify what kind of fabric that you were, you're working with. But what I did is I have, I'm calling it fusible fabric because I have, um, on my fabric, I have used some heat and bond the light. So I took my 13 by 13 inch, um, fabric, and then I have my fusible web on the backside. So then I'm going to be in applique mode. All right. So coming back, I'm choosing the fusible fabric. And then from there, the only other thing that I'm telling it is that I'm not using a fine point blade. I actually want to change that to a rotary blade and hit apply. And then once I have these, that's the only thing I have to do. I can press go on the go cutter and 12 minutes later, 12 minutes later, I kid you not, you're going to have this cutout. And what's interesting is that, um, the one that I did yesterday and I stopped there just so that I can kind of show you where it was in the process. I did a new one. Um, no, actually this was the one I did this morning. And then I did another one just before the show started. And between these two, I changed my blade because I started noticing that 
my cuts were starting to be a little bit uh, more rough. It wasn't a brand new uh, blade. I had been using it in several projects. Um, so we're gonna see what we get. But once you, once it's done printing, and again, this particular project took about 12 minutes uh, for it to cut. I, I say print, but it's kind of cut. Um, I'm sorry, I say print, but I actually mean cut. Um, you wind up with, and let me take you to the down camera. Um, hopefully that'll be it. So you wind up with this all, and it actually looks pretty, pretty good. This is the one I haven't touched with yet on the red, and this is the one where I peeled off the, the, the top. And then the beauty of these is that when you're cutting these, you're actually winding up with two blocks. You have a, a positive and a negative, which Boom, you're already, you know, if you're going with all that effort, whether you choose to do the Cricut, mine's right over here, or whether you're going to do with the X-Acto knife and you're going to do that by hand, whenever you do this process, you wind up with two, um, two blocks. And that's really, um, I think, really cool. So when I am working on this, I peel these. And with these, uh, with this particular um, motif or, or uh, template, all of, the, all of the, the pinwheels are going in the same motion. And so what I'd like to do is kind of like when you're getting waxed, you go against the grain. And so what I was doing was just holding these down, and I'll show you on this red one, uh, but I just hold it and just kind of work my way around. And then you wind up with something that is kind of scary looking. Um, uh, with an older blade, you're gonna notice that some of the pieces actually got torn and so, those are no problem. Um, I already experienced that um, kind of like a shredded mess it, it's going to feel like. Just take a breath. It's going to be all right because I guarantee we can make it look like this. It's really, it's really not too bad. So the, the negative um, on this one, so the negative is only going to offer you that center, do, um, center circle and then each of the spokes and then there's actually nothing that is connecting any of these. So what we do is I take my um, tweezers and in the Cricut world, they just call this weeding. When you're taking pieces, just like you're in the garden weeding and you're taking one piece at a time and laying it down. Now, because these are, um, these are actually don't wind up perfect, perfect, um, exact uh, duplicates of one another and I'm okay with that. I don't even, for this one, I didn't even worry about making sure that I had a sort order. Um, to be honest, in Gita's uh, directions, depending on the complexity um, of the design itself, there may need be that requirement of, um, of a sort order. Um, and then just like a, your, what your layout, but for this easy peasy, don't worry about um, don't worry about numbering any of your pieces because it'll be okay, I promise. So I go through and I start weeding and taking all of these pieces off. And really the worst part of this job, that's paper, the worst part of the job is sometimes getting um, the paper off of the mat itself. The, um, there's several different types of mats and each one has adhesion on them, and so they're meant for a particular type of material. So if you're working with cardstock, you probably wouldn't use this one. The pink one is for fabric, and although I am not putting, um, and actually I should have said, when I'm laying this down, um, this is paper, I'm just making sure I'm paper, and this is fabric, when I lay them down on the board, I'm laying the paper side and then with the fabric right side up. So I go through and I, I'm going to remove all of these. And sometimes cleaning the board is not a fun job. But again, that's what Netflix is for. And you just go through and you, I've got all of these little half moon looking things and on this particular design there's 18 of these little of these little spokes 
And then one thing that I do watch out for, and I hope I've been paying attention while I've been talking, is that one of these sides, um, let me show you over here, one of these sides has more of a point, and then one of the sides is more rounded. And I want, that's the only thing I really have to pay attention to is that when you're creating these, that the rounded is gonna go towards the center of your, uh, of your spiral. And then, I know there's probably an astron um, astronomy term for the, you know, the galaxy and the spirals, but I don't know what that is. And this one actually came off really kind of fun. It took both the paper and the fabric. So we're gonna separate that. I don't want the paper. And then this is sometimes even a great job that you can pass on to the kids and just say, hey, I got something for you to do. You bored? All right, so I'm trying to do a quick check, making sure that I've got all the pieces. The only thing I didn't grab was the center disc. And then with that, um, I'm gonna lay this one, this to the side for now. And now what we wanna do is take another 13 by 13 inch opposite color and I would, for me to give me sanity as I find my center, I find my center, <laughs> and then from there, I can put the center disc, that center circle, right in the center. Now, part of what I've been um, one of the things I learned this weekend is that you definitely want to have your pressing surface um, close by, if not right in front of you. You know, if you want to be seated to do this, because you're going to you're going to be here for a while, and it wouldn't it really probably wouldn't serve you well to do this on a flat surface, and then try to lift everything and take it to your ironing board. So if you can, either get one of your, like I have these wool mats um, so that I can um, press and do my ironing right on the table, um, or you may be standing in front of the iron, but whatever works best for you, um, I would say do it. So the first thing I'd like to work with is that center disc, and let's take you down, and I'm just finding the center, and again, I'm not even, I'm not, I could, I guess, fold it into a quarter so I actually have my true center and then just lay that in. I didn't do that yesterday, but I'm gonna do it now. And then this is the only one that I immediately um, lay in place and then actually put some heat to it to make that stay because I want that to be a constant for me because there's gonna be a lot of, as we're putting these spokes down, there's going to be a lot of negotiating and just like finessing the project. So um, before I actually start putting those on there, I, where are we? I would love to go to the room. I didn't get to the room yet. So let me find my glasses. There we are. And let's just say hi to some people. Okay, so uh, we've got Fizz. Hello, Fizz. We got Susan. Um, and Susan said she just had to break out the peppermint chocolate star cookies from Trader Joe's. <laughs> All yours, Susan. I'm the, uh, peppermint, no bueno for me, but I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, we have Angel. We've got Tracy and we have Jesse, Charlie, Kathleen. Who else we've got? Uh, Rob. Hello, Rob. And Charlie, Janice, hello Janice. And I think that's the gang. Oh, we've got Yoan, and the show couldn't, yes, of course, and the show couldn't start without him saying hello. And of course, Jesse. All right. All right, so, and actually, yeah, so Jesse, I actually did um, I did some ex experimentation. I did try putting the, the paper 
uh, backing faced up, but again, that did not work for me because what I found with this rotary cutter, and again, it depends on maybe the age of the blade or the how small the um, the design itself, but I have a lot of pieces that are meeting right in the very center of that um, of that design. And what I was finding is that as the the rotary cutter um, it doesn't always lift and sometimes it does move and the paper started getting and popping up and getting in the way. I found better for me, better success having the paper side down and then that way I wasn't getting, um, it really wasn't becoming messy because the first project I ever tried with um, and I tried over and over and over, um, it was just, it was just messy and I found that it was it was no good for me but if you have success that way I would say that's that's a good tip so um, also I wanted to say thank you thank you thank you thank you to everybody in the room and especially today on Monday I'm gonna say thank you to Yoen because last week he inspired me um, he inspired me to go ahead and make something if you guys remember, I showed it last Monday, that um, that standing Christmas tree, and I kid you not, I put it on Insta, and I was like, mm, I got to get better at my Insta game and start taking pictures of my project. Well, lo and behold, uh, Bernina actually, um, they actually showed my project, and let me go, there it is. There's Bernina, and they put me on their, on not just their Instagram, but they actually put me on their their page. So, Yoan, you got a, a shout out there, and I'm so excited. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I get so happy when a company can reach out to you and say, hey, I see you. And it makes me feel like everything that I make is not a complete, um, a complete disaster. So it was very exciting when I got on the Bernina. So I wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for Yoan. So thank you. I think that's awesome. All right. So uh, getting back to the project. Now the work is. This is really where you're getting into. Uh, the fun part, I think, is just, this is actually could be very mod um, meditative, um, but if, as I said earlier, you've got these half moon shapes, and there's a slightly rounded side, and then there's a very pointed side. So I like to just kind of start working, and for this design, I'm trying to get as close to, as close to the center as possible and then it's never going to be perfect the first time around but I just kind of work and you see how sometimes you're laying down and they get messed up so it really does it's just this is all a practice of finesse and it can go pretty quick um, and this is where this is a fun test I think for you to practice how much you can eyeball a certain measurement and actually be consistent. So you can already see like these want these these edges here want to flow into one another. So I'm going to lay these down uh, pretty quickly. And then the nice thing is is that because we use the heat and bond, I can keep moving, keep moving. Worst case scenario, if once I press it down, and let's say I wasn't happy with the way it actually came out, maybe I missed something, I can always peel it and reapply it. So there's no love lost. And you can already see that it's just, it, it really comes out really nice. And Gita's, um, Gita's website, she has so many, that woman hustles. She has so many patterns that are really interesting um, and unique. And I think for somebody who may, if, you, if, if applique is your thing, you know, I would say there are pretty ambitious patterns that you can, you can explore in her website. 
So you can see I'm not, I'm not so much worrying about how perfect I am just to begin with. I'm just getting them generally enough to have space enough for all 18 pieces to cohabitate together. And boom. And it's really, um, this was the part where I was watching the movie over the weekend. I took a break from, well, actually we did, we took a break from the holidays. And have you guys seen The Jungle Cruise? I guess I'm living under a rock because we finally watched it last night. <laughs> get it. <laughs> Dwayne Johnson was just really, really good. And I absolutely, it was so nice to watch a, a blockbuster movie that wasn't full of grotesques, jokes, and, you know, adult humor and swear words. I mean, it was really, I think they did, everybody in there, Emily Blunt, she did really great. And um, what's his other, is it Jake Whitehall? He did a really fantastic job. And it was, it was really, really a fun, a fun, fun movie. Um, so, so you can see I'm already, without even really being uber, uber um, finicky, I'm really coming up with that pinwheel. And I still only have two left to go. And then it's just a matter of making sure that they're all going to um, span the right distance. And I'll save you from that. We won't go that far on this one. But so this last one, I found the same thing yesterday. I was like, oh, I was doing pretty good with all of the spokes until I got to the last one. And I was like, ooh, I need to make some room. And then if you remember, um, I set mine so that the diameter was 10 inches. So roughly, that's where I want it um, wind up. And then just putting them all, now that I have them on the board, now it comes all of the, the, the finesse work that I have left to do on that. So that would be, um, how to get them on there. And then once you've got them um, exactly, your picture perfect, don't move. Grab your hot iron and just press, 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 press. And then it's really lovely. I mean, I wound up with, just in a couple of hours, I did, um, this one is the red on white. And I have a white, of course, on red. And then one thing that I, did so I ended up making again every time that you're every time that you're making a block you're actually making two because you've got the positive and the negative so that yesterday in just like just a couple of hours I wound up with four blocks and then when I was making it I was like oh I know what I forgot to do I forgot to mirror them so that the spirals you may want to go clockwise or you may want them to go counterclockwise um, but mix it up. And then I was being so cliche and just normal that with my red and white selection, but I mean, run with the colors. If you could do that background and then maybe you have like an ombre or a rainbow effect with your colors and then maybe whatever that, um, that uh, foreground color is to, to give that negative. Uh, I really think this is a, a really fun project to delve into. All right, so that was applying the pieces that were separate, but what happens when you have this spider web, <laughs> this sp spider web? And really, it's, it's the same deal. It's just making sure that you're taking your time. So I'm gonna start with my red, and mind you, this is gonna be a good, a good test because the one that I, th the spider web that I'm calling it, um, this one was before I changed my blade. So now what this one that I made just afterwards, having changed the blade, this one should be a really 
easy peasy, um, it'll come clean. And hopefully that one won't have as many rips. But the first thing I, got, I have to do is separate my paper from the fabric. So this is really um, slow and steady. You want to make sure that you're not um, you're not just yanking or pulling too hard. So I'm going to pull this. And then my main concern is that I'm OK if the paper rips, but I'm not wanting to tear the fabric. Sometimes um, if the cut wasn't absolutely perfect, you know, you may have one stress point that is literally only hanging on by a string. And there, I was very gentle, and now I've got my paper. I can toss this, don't need that. And now I'm left with my, what do I want to call this? This is my, my little spider web. <laughs> and you see that like I've lost the center itself. Um, so I'm going to show you here. So I've lost it. It broke. But we can definitely make a repair on that. I'm not, I'm not concerned. So both of these fabrics were cut roughly at 13 by 13. So I first try to get the entire perimeter uh, square and make sure that that is all together. And then from there, we are just loosely letting these untangle. And so see like this piece here fell away. This piece is connected. And I'm just <clears throat> trying to get things out of each other's way. So this one, I'm not sure exactly where that one's supposed to go. So I'm just going to do the other ones where I know that they belong. And then from I'll worry about the stragglers from there. So as I, as I coax these flat, then you find that you're starting to get that shape that is a little more familiar. And you're just little parts of the fan. So this one is, this one's getting me tricky. I actually think this one, okay, so that's interesting. So this one, I think um, I was missing a piece. I didn't count the, the, the spokes before. But I think this one, the way it's cut, I can tell that this one belonged to the inner spoke. So that one I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just cut off and make sure where, where I'm cutting. There we go. All right, so this one I know is an inner, is, belongs to the other set. And now, maybe things will start making more sense. Yeah. Now, if this is where you're going to put your uh, what's the Whoville? What's um, the Grinch's dog's name? Max, where he had, he's a tryhard, <laughs> and he is actually he has a lot of ambition to climb up the mountain with all those stolen gifts, and I would compare this project. If you were going to do this for an entire quilt, um, that's a lot. That's pretty ambitious, um, because after. If you're, if you're thinking you're going to do this for however many blocks, I can say even, you know, if this is 10 inches and if I want my block to finish perhaps at 12 inches, so then I'm still, I like a generous lap, uh, lap quilt, so maybe not, or for the blanket, I'm sorry, uh, not a lap quilt, like a uh, couch sofa quilt, that's going to be like four or maybe five wide, so that's five, and then if lengthwise I need at least six so 
that's maybe 30 of these blocks, so you're actually cutting 15 of these out. And then once all this is done, then you're going to do some top stitching, maybe some decorative stitching. That would be, but I think this would be really um, a special quilt that you could come back to after year after year. Um, I'm almost there. There we go. There we go. Look at that. So just with a little bit of uh, patience and, you know, just a little bit of um, negotiating the fabric back and forth, it'll, it'll lay down. So I know it looks scary to begin with, but it will work itself out. This one particular, this one broke. It, it's no longer connected. And then this, um, this center ring, it's also broken. This one's off. But again, once you press this into place, so you just put them where they need to be, um, you'll never ever, who's going to know? Who's going to know? And it's going to look, you're going to be so happy that you, that you did this. So yeah, so if you just want to try that, I mean, that actually is um, a fun, fun project. All right, so I'm going to check on the room, and then I actually have another question for you guys. Um, so, so Fizz, Fizz says um, she's getting uh, white stripe vibes. And so basically, <laughs> when I was showing this yesterday to Aaron, I'm like, um, where is it? I'm going to take one and show them. It's like, you will, you will subscribe to the Quilled Stream. You will. Does that give you like vertigo? <laughs> and if you check out her uh, Geta's website for these spiral blocks, this is the this is the 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 simple one. But then there's all of these ones that make the uh, the spiral even radiate um, and kind of like undulate. It's really really. She, these are she, she's done some unique ones, and I, I I bought the collection. I was I was really um, excited. And, oh, okay, so going back to Jesse's comment is that he takes the paper off before he puts the fabric down. And I didn't consider that. I didn't actually try it, and I absolutely will. Um, that's, a, that's a really good tip. So, oh, and welcome, Cat. I see Cat subscribed. And speaking of which, of course, this is your first time i hope that you like and subscribe get to know the people in the room um we have a fun bunch of people that love to quilt and sew and chit chat make fun of me um the question that i'm going to come back to on this process so with the block that i have made and um, and this is the one where i want you to consider we have this background fabric which is creating um, the creating the positive and then we have this red fabric underneath that creates the negative so from the entire 13 inch this is my question this is going to be a lot thicker than and a little bit more even more I would say sturdy than the block that we created earlier um, when the this is the one I did yesterday, but this is almost the same thing. But if you notice, there's only one piece of fabric here, and then you just have a little bit of you just have that applique there. So would you guys? Um, and that's actually fun. You can kind of see it popping through um, the other one. But would you guys double up and like add more fabric, or how would you um, build this up so that? it's going to be the same thickness as the other block that has more or less the two layers. If you've got an answer for that, I would love to get your advice. Do I let it go? Um, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, but like if you want your entire edge to edge um, quilt to really have the same weight throughout and you don't want to have some, some parts of the quilt, some blocks that are thinner than the others, 
Um, how would you tackle that? Now, I don't think that would be as much of an issue if you were, let's say, you're going to do a runner uh, or if you wanted to make this into a, a, a door hanging or something like that. I don't think it really would be that noticeable, but when you've got something that you're going to be wrapping up and, you know, you're, you're kind of using a lot harder, you know, would you build, excuse me, would you build up that fabric um, on the ones that just have like the the pinwheel on it not the not the double layers i'd love to hear what you guys think all right so after that um that's when you can really run with this project i think where where we're at is that you've got um you can make this into a wall hanging you can make this into um, actually, a, a, I think a project bag or kind of like a shopping bag on the on the outside, I think would be awesome. Um, I'm really debating whether I want to commit to four pillows, um, but at the same time, I'm having so much fun with this, and like I can whack out several of these um, several of these blocks in a day, and they can add up pretty quickly. I was thinking about I went red and white but I could do green and white, I could do green and red. Sorry guys, if there's colorblind people, I know men are the only ones that are colorblind, but you could do the Christmas red and white. Um, you could actually even, if you're, if you're cutting enough of these, you could make, um, take the, the, ring, the, the spokes from several different cuts. And so you could do a red, white, blue, yellow. You could just have all of the colors and then separate them out um, and like divide them into different blocks. And then you have a really colorful uh, pinwheel. So, you know, you can either do it with solids or you could take a print. I mean, there's so many different ways that you can run with this. Um, all right, so Tracy has a suggestion. She, she says, could you cut the red fabric into a circle so it was just behind the white overlay? I love that idea, Tracy. That was one of the things that I was considering is that we know that the, the diameter is 10 inches, and so just cut that 10 inches, and then, what, and then that could become, I'm sorry, that could become another applique or you know, if you're really good at insetting um, circles within like a square or do like a set in, set in block, I mean, I'm not afraid of that. I think that would be a, one way that you could even out um, the bulky layers on some blocks and not others. Um, and I think Jesse had another idea too, which was, I'd let it be, but if you wanted everything to have the same weight, you could put some interfacing on the back of the single layer blocks, nothing too thick though. And I think that would probably be the way that I would go. One, it's gonna be a lot cheaper. Two, it is gonna be closer to that, um, you know, it's just gonna, I think it's not gonna be as weighty. Um, and maybe, I, th I like Tracy's idea um, between the two of them, adding the interfacing and doing the, the circle cutouts is um, making these where I wouldn't want, for me, I think when I'm making a quilt out of this, I'm gonna do a, um, a block, how do I say this? I'm gonna, I'm gonna frame each of these blocks and I kind of like the, the idea that these are going into infinity where there's not a hard color line that's around them. Um, so maybe I would still just do um, a white ring. I don't know, it's, it's, just, it's just a preference thing. Um, or I could make a red ring that would go around this and then it would definitely um, fix that in space instead of having like these these gaps where I'm calling it, it like these this white area just seems to go on into infinity but these are all fun ideas uh, Kathleen says she would also do interfacing and I don't know <laughs> you know did I already say talk about this it's giving me ping uh, penguin umbrella uh, if I did this in black and white like the what like, like what you saw in cricket yeah it would definitely be the uh, the penguin's umbrella and actually some of her designs let me see I would love to let me go back to chrome and I'm gonna show you like some of her designs are 
really, really interesting. Um, bu -bu -bu. How do I get there? Some of them, like I love, so Tracy, this is, this is more um, doing the ring. So you, actually you could even do like a, um, a trivet or um, something for the table and where I was thinking of framing them, but you can see how some of these are really just not the basic. Like I have just the inner ring, but these really are some fun different ways to work with these, um, these spirals. But then she gets into, there's, she does the same kind of motif for Valentine's Day. And then the, the I'm gonna try to find the one pattern that I was like, wow, if only I had enough patience to try uh, to do it. Was it in Illusions? I love the, the, this modern one. It kind of reminds me of that, that photo frame. I think maybe it's in Illusions. Yes, there's a lot. She she's not afraid of of giving content on her website. <clears throat> I absolutely love this one. I don't. I think this one is totally doable. Um, I I just I love these and definitely you guys should check her out. Oh, I wish I could find the one, the other pattern that is I thought was just so phenomenal. Um, I know I downloaded it. Let me see if I can, let me see if I can find the download. Yeah, here it is. So bear with me, it's, it's coming up. And this one is called Double Splendor. And I can't show the entire, entire thing, but this thing is so intricate. Um, let me see if I can blow it up just a little bit. Like that is, for what I'm doing, this is much more involved. And this one, you're definitely going to need to number your pieces because order is really gonna matter here. But like this is definitely something you only give to somebody who is quilt worthy. And <clears throat> nice thing is, is that when you're cutting these out, you potentially are getting two of this of this quilt because you've got the positive and the, and the negative. But definitely something worth uh, worth checking out. And so that's it. All right, let me go um, back to the room. <laughs> All right, Jesse just said, "Whoa!" I think that was in response to the uh, the the yeah what Yohan is calling the spirograph. It is, that is really, it, that, like this is a work of art. I can only imagine how many hours it would take. And um, yeah, and Tracy's saying, it's like a, uh, a complex giant dahlia. Is that somebody's, uh, Tracy, is that going to be your, your 2022? Um, <laughs> that's going to be your, 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 your one quilt that you finished this year? Probably not going to be me because not only, um, actually, I think you would have a lot of fun um, just doing the, the, the quilting on it. So how about somebody create the quilt and then Tracy will actually, um, somebody, somebody stitches it together and Tracy can quilt it. That might be worth uh, sending it over to the UK and back if you're not already there. So gang, that is, you know, that was my whole taking you the, down to the path of the spiral quilt. Um, I really hope that you guys try these and like maybe even just make two blocks, make a small little um, something for the, for the table, make a table runner, make something for your wall. Um, <laughs> And I'm hoping, Johan, you're saying that um, ain't nobody got time for that. That's for the Dahlia. Um, and then Tracy said she has. She has made a, a Dahlia. Look at her. She says they're quite easy. Just like she doesn't use a seam ripper. Mm -mm. She's, she's, she's beyond that. 
<laughs> all right, and I've got all of these, all, all of these little pieces I've just dropped on my lap, and uh, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, at least I know that there's supposed to be 18 of them, so we'll see if I wind up with that many. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to say uh, we're going to leave it there, and thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you have a very, very beautiful week ahead of you. I know it's getting much, much colder. And reminder, there's only 19 days until the holidays. So if you've got a thing or two still left to do, you better get on it. <laughs> All right, guys, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you on Friday.